Mr. President, we're going to Mars. Mars or bust? We're going to send a human crew to Mars in the decade of the 2030s, and we are right at the cusp of the breakthrough to show how this is possible. I just returned from the Kennedy Space Center with its director, Bob Cabana. All of the ground infrastructure, the two launch pads are all being reconfigured. Old abandoned launch pads on Cape Canaveral Air Force Station are being redone with new commercial launch pads and less than two years from right now, September of 2017, we will be launching Americans again on American rockets to go to and from the International Space Station and three years from now, we will be launching the full up test of the largest and most powerful rocket ever invented by mankind, the space launch system with its spacecraft, Orion, that will be the forerunner that will ultimately take us to Mars. Mr. President, this appropriations bill that we passed just before Christmas treats NASA with a decent increase of over a billion dollars and puts the resources into each part of NASA, its scientific programs, its technology programs, its exploration programs, its aviation and especially aviation research programs to keep us moving forward in our development of technology. I'm especially enthusiastic about bringing this message because 30 years ago today, I had the privilege of launching on the 24th flight of the space shuttle into the heavens for a six day mission. Let me tell you about some of the members of this crew, just to give you an idea of how accomplished these people are. In NASA terminology, in the space shuttle, the commander sits on the left seat, on the right seat, his pilot. He, in effect, is co-pilot. He handles all of the systems. In almost all cases, those pilot astronauts are military test pilots, and they are so good when they land that space shuttle without an engine, they've got one chance, they are so good they can put it on a dime. And of course, our crew, 30 years ago, launching from pad 39A, the same pad that I saw on Saturday that has now been transformed to a commercial launch pad under lease to SpaceX. That crew was the best of the best. The two pilot astronauts, naval aviators, in the left seat, Commander Hoot Gibson, Robert Gibson, the best stick and rudder guy in the whole astronaut office. He could put it down and you would hardly know that the wheels had touched. And in the right seat, then Marine Colonel, now Marine General retired, Charlie Bolden, who then went on to command three missions thereafter, and today is for the last seven years the administrator of NASA. He's the one that has transformed NASA and has us going in the right direction now to go to Mars at the same time working out the arrangements for the commercial marketplace to flourish as we're seeing by Boeing and SpaceX, which will be the two rockets that will launch in less than two years, taking Americans 
to and from the International Space Station. But let me tell you about the rest of the crew that launched 30 years ago today. The flight engineer, Steve Hawley, an astrophysicist. He's the one, by the way, that deployed for the first time the Hubble Space Telescope. An astrophysicist, Dr. George Pinky Nelson. By the way, all of these guys are doctors. They're PhDs. And Dr. Franklin Chang Diaz, an astronaut who came to America from Costa Rica, not speaking a word of English after high school, taught himself English. He has a PhD in plasma physics from MIT. And while he was still flying seven times as an astronaut, he was building a plasma rocket. And today, that plasma rocket is one of the propulsion systems that NASA is considering when we go to Mars. If you saw the Matt Damon movie, The Martian, the author of the book had consulted with Franklin about the technology, and that is referenced in the book as the propulsion that sent that spacecraft to and from Mars. Engineer Bob Sinker, an RCA engineer, we launched an RCA a communications satellite in the course of the mission. And the seventh, yours truly. I performed 12 medical experiments, the primary of which was a protein crystal growth experiment in zero G sponsored by the medical school at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, their comprehensive cancer center. The theory being, if you could grow protein crystals in, out of the influence of gravity, then you could grow them larger and more pure. So when you brought them back to Earth, examining them either through X-ray diffraction or an electron microscope, you could unlock the secrets of their architecture and get the molecular structure. I also performed the first American stress test in space in an unmechanized treadmill, and you wonder how in zero G can you propel yourself running on a treadmill. I had to put on a harness with bungee cords that would force me down onto the treadmill and pulled and pushed with my feet, we were trying to see what happens to our astronauts that go outside on spacewalks, their hearts would start skipping beats. So the idea was to get the heart rate up and use me as a comparison. Indeed, what happened was I ran for 20 minutes, pulling and pushing, and lo and behold, discovered that the tape recorder was not working and had to repeat it. It made so much racket in that small, confined space that our crew was mighty happy when I got through. And thus, the space doctors had additional data to try to study, and they have published that. We thought it was the first stress tests in space, but later on we found out that the Soviets had done stress tests. We don't know how long. So Mr. President, on this occasion of 30 years later on something that was transformative to me, I want to take this occasion to say that I am so optimistic of where we are going because we are going to Mars. If you ask the average American on the street, they think the space program is shut down because they visualize it as the shutting of the space shuttle. But they will be reminded and will be re-energized and enthused 
and excited as only human space flight can do, when those rockets start lifting off at the Cape in September of 2017, less than two years, and we are beginning on our way to Mars. Mr. President, thank you for this opportunity on this 30th anniversary. Mr. President, I yield the floor.